Uh, welcome to our Sew Like a Pro segment. This is a poncho with no seams. So first, you want to purchase your fabric, and we want to take it. I, I purchased 60 inch wide fabric, it's an inch and a yard, uh, I mean an inch, a yard and a half long. 60 inches wide, and I folded it into a square. So I flipped it, and then I flipped it. And then I took my tape measure to get my circumference because this is a circular poncho, and I measured from my corner to 29 inches. So I started at 29, 29, 29, 29, all the way around at 29. Now if I wanted to stitch it at my hip so to stay fitted to my body slightly, I would measure my hip measurement, my total circumference of my hip at an inch, and then I take it and divide it by four, because this is four pieces, uh, four pieces, uh, the front and the back and the front and the back. And then I would measure that. So mine would be ten and a half, and I would measure from here up ten and a half, and I would take it and fold it and press it. Because this is my lengthwise grain line, the strongest grain line, which everything is usually laid out on, usually. This is my crosswise grain, my lengthwise, my crosswise, and my bias. So if I don't press the crease in here now, later on it's going to stretch. Now the other thing, this is going to stretch because it's the bias grain line, which is the weakest grain line. So if you take this and hang it up by the corner, 72 hours and let it stretch first. You might want to do that because it's going to stretch. The, uh, and it, so the shape is not going to stay exactly in a circle. So if you want it to be perfect, let it hang 72 hours and then cut it. Or cut it now, make it, and you may want to go back and recut it and re-blend the shape. Or you might like it with the disordered shape. So it's up to you. So here in my neck, I measured 3 inches and did the same thing in a circle. So, uh, are we going to start to go ahead and cut out our shape? But today I decided to cut on the table. Pfft, wrong idea. Because the glass is so slippery, it moves like crazy. So I had to mark it more than once. But I'll clean these marks off. So use your uh, uh, sewing marking pen to cut it out. Did you hang this fabric already for 72 hours? No, I did not. No, I did not. I don't mind the disordered shape. So here, I'm going to cut out my neck. Three inches. Nice little circle. This is room enough to fit over your head. Now, you can make it wider if you wanted to. You know how people like to top and then like drop off their shoulder. So, whichever way you want to roll with it, let's do that. Now here, I purchased some ribbon because I want to enhance the bottom hem. So mine I took and I surged around the entire bottom, I surged around the entire neck. You can see I opened it up. There's plenty of room for this to slip off and over your head. So take the grow grain ribbon, it's only like three eighths of an inch, and press it. Put the iron on it and press it and curve 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 it. So because remember this is just straight but your hem is curved and I want to press that onto the bottom of my top. So here I surge the bottom of my top. And I pressed it. And so I already have this sort of fit the hip. I just did that straight little stitch. I pressed that crease in there and followed that crease and stitched that in here. But I just want to show you how to finish the bottom of the hem. So here's my back on my lengthwise grain line. I stitched this curve. This started out on my wrong side. So I stitched on the wrong side first. So this would be here. It got stitched. See this curve is going out. This I stitched right along the edge on top of that serge. I stitched right along the edge just like this. You see this curve? When I stitch it like this and flip it up then the curve is going upward and I won't get any puckers so here. How do you I make it out like curve? This, this by pressing it. The heat from the iron and the steam made it curve. 
So you have to apply steam, the pressure steam, to it as you turn it? Apply the pressure and turn the ribbon and let the iron just keep going right along it. And it's going to take six yards of trim to finish the bottom of this. So with this curve, just like this, I stitched it along the edge and now I'm going to take it and flip it up. So here, I took this without, you see I did that part already, but I st stitched these two together and then I flipped it and now I'm going to take it. Now this curve is now going this way. So it started out, I stitched along the edge like that. I'm going to take it and flip it up and then I'm going to stitch along the edge again. That way my top is finished both on the inside and the outside. See the back is finished. And then when you press it, it's no puckers. It's going to lay nice and flat. Because we took the one curve, look, the outside curve, stitched it right along the edge on top to cover the serger stitch. And you don't have to stitch it if you don't want to. And then I took it and flipped it up. And then I just stitched right along the very edge. And then I pressed it. And I just stitched those two together, let them overlap. Don't stretch it while you're sewing. Just let it ease in. Let those overlap. Back stitch. And here you can see on my neck, if you don't want to use the ribbon as a trim, just do a little roll hem along the neck. So it's up to you what kind of finish you want to do. Here we go, a little roll hem. So you can do that same hem on the bottom. Either use a serger stitch to set it up or do a basting stitch first and then turn it once and then turn it again and stitch it. So it's no side seams, no shoulder seams to stitch. All you have to do is uh, stitch it along the side if you like. You don't have to stitch it along the side seams. And then you got this perfect cute little poncho and no seams. So I'm going to just let the sleeves drape uh, and fall wherever they like. So sew like a prop.